Hey everyone, and welcome to the Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast. I have to be, sorry. Okay, I don't know if that's, there we go. <laughs> welcome, um, thank you for all returning viewers. Welcome back, and if you're new, hello, welcome to the podcast. Um, I'm Holly, your host. I live in Virginia in the States with my husband, my two kids, and my cat and my dog. I almost blanked on who lived in my house. <laughs> um, so, like I said, hello. Um, I'm still kind of in the process of waking up. How awesome is this mug? It's my, it's my Halloween mug, but I love it. Um, still in the process of waking up. Um, so, coffee. Javalia coffee. Oh my gosh, it is so good. It's one of my favorites. Anyways, let's get into it. Um, I have one finished object, which was the test run, the very first, I say prototype, of the um, summer romance shawl, which ended up being really wavy. And I initially thought, okay, this is because I was using a hook size too small. This yarn is a worsted weight and I was using a six and a half millimeter hook. So I thought it's definitely the hook size. That's what's causing it to ripple. No, the shells is what's causing it to ripple right here. I love the shells, they're beautiful. But now I know why no one uses them in shawls because the increases are far too large to even try to maintain being a straight edge. But I have fixed that. So this is the finished object. My, my daughter has been running around with this and she loves it. So the design has slightly changed um, just because, you know, it was my first run. This is my first ever shawl pattern and... This is totally trial and error at this point and I love the design and I wanted to stick close to it as close to it as possible um, so I started this next one sorry I'm pulling out of a bag that's right next to me started this next one and like I said I am just grabbing any pretty much any cake yarn that I have to try and use it um, yeah but I think I have figured out this design because it is now laying flat. I mean, yes, I'm only on the second re I'm just starting the second repeat. Um, so this one is, might be a little hard to see the details because it's a little darker. Um, so the shell stitches are smaller and I noticed that in the other one, it was getting really wide, really fast, but it was staying kind of short which was another reason why I think the rippling was happening, happening because the the peak of the triangle wasn't getting long enough fast enough as it was getting wide fast. So I've had to change a little bit. Um, I had to do a different center. As much as I loved the two eyelets going all the way down, it just wasn't working. Um, so this is it. I'm pretty much at this point, I'm going to finish it double check to make sure that we don't, oh, sorry. I have this binder here that has some really cool information in it, but, um, I want to go through the whole repeats, um, to double check, make sure there's no rippling. I don't come across any other issues. Um, I had to add a few rows to make sure the repeats were going to repeat perfectly because I noticed on the last one I kind of just went through and I noticed that the repeats, once I got to the repeats, they weren't lining up the exact same way they were before. So the stitch count was different or off. If that makes, okay. Anyways. Yeah. So this is a Karen cake, the yarn. Um, I don't remember the color because I don't have the ball band I lost it um, but I don't know if they even carry this color anymore um, I know it was clearance at my Michaels 
Um, so they might not even carry it anymore. I don't know. It might be one of those ones that they tried and it wasn't very popular, so they got rid of it. I don't know. So that was a finished object and a work in progress. I don't think today's podcast is going to be long, which is good. <laughs> um, cause I feel like lately they have been really long, really, really long. Um, next work in progress is, um, my secret path shawl, secret paths shawl by Joanna Lindahl. Um, so last time we saw this, I was only on the blue and my blue actually was like to here, to this, to that repeat. And I ripped back because I realized that my three Irish girls yarn was not going to be enough. So, oh my gosh. Now that I'm seeing it on camera, I'm loving the way those colors work with each other. Like as I'm making it, I'm like, uh, I don't know, is it gonna work? But now that I'm seeing it on the camera and how the colors like play together without looking directly at it, oh my gosh, I love it. It's so pretty. So this, this color is um, Three Irish Girls Yarn in Fly Me to the Moon. It's a sock yarn. Um, I Hold on, I think I have it right here. Okay, I have it right here. It's their Adorn Lux base which is 85 merino 20 or 85 merino 15% nylon. And this one is the speckles which is beautiful. Um this is Hedgehog Fibers in their sock yarn. I don't know what the blend is because I lost I lost the tag somewhere in my couch. <laughs> so yes, this is the Secret Path shawl and I love the way it works up. It is so pretty and it's simple. It's nothing like that's going to confuse you. It's super simple, but it is so pretty the way it comes out. And like I said, I am loving the way these two colorways work together because this, this dark color is actually this really dark dark blue that you have in the speckles and there's pinks that tie it together the only color that isn't in this one is the green but I like those pops of green I think it's super pretty the way they play off of each other and this is a free pattern on Ravelry um, yeah so this next one I am NOT an amigurumi maker to say the least I have made one and it was a Baymax and it looked terrible <laughs> not the construction of itself the thing that made it look terrible was you were supposed to use thread or no 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 you were supposed to use safety eyes and I didn't have any so I decided oh I'll just use yarn to make the eyes and the mouth it looked terrible and when I was sewing on the arms and legs, I think I sewed them on crooked. <laughs> so here is going to be my second attempt. And I can't be super loud about it, but my daughter has been asking for a giant pinky pie. So I went to Joann's, they were having a sale on yarn again. Um, I don't know if it's the same sale, but um, their Red Heart Super Saver was on sale for $279, plus there was an extra 20% off your entire purchase. So, here is what I have so far. I'm, yeah. <laughs> so, you're going to laugh because you're going to be like, what the heck is <laughs> that? Like I said, she wants a giant one. This is just the front leg, which I, like I said, I am very new to um, amigurumi making. So if anyone could tell me, I don't know if I overstuffed it and it's lumpy like that or if I didn't stuff it enough. 
So if anyone could tell me, I know Randy makes a lot from uh, Random Randy's, uh, oh my gosh, crochet talk. Totally blanking here. <laughs> she makes a lot of amigurumis. Um, so if you guys let me know. What am I doing wrong? Because this, and I've already sewed it up at this point because I, it was late at night and I was like, I'm not in the mood. But for the next ones, um, so yeah, this is just her front leg. <laughs> and I went super math geek. Okay, first off, hold on before I get into that. This is actually Baby Pink by um, Red Heart Super Saver. I got five balls of this because... And I just started the bottom of the second one. So that was technically, I guess, a finished object, even though it's part of a bigger object. Um, I started the other one, and I noticed that my tension was way tighter on this one. So I have to pull this all out and restart again. So yeah, um, I went super math geek on this. And I measured out all the proportions because there are Pinkie Pie patterns. I find that they're not very accurate to the character. Oh, excuse me. Um, they're pretty and they're cute, but I want it to be as close as, as close as I could get it to the real character. And plus she wanted a giant one and all the patterns are for little ones that are, you know, maybe eight inches big. I mean, there are some other ones that are characters, like, I've seen Fluttershy and I think it was Rainbow Dash. There is someone that made one of them, and they were freaking amazing. But they didn't have them in large version. So, like I said, I went super math geek. I measured everything out. Like, I'm doing all the proportions. And like I have all the, I have it all transferred from millimeters to inches so I can get a, because yeah, I work in millimeter hooks, but I, when I think, oh, 10 millimeters, I'm like, okay, well one, that's a hook size. So I get that one, but like 60 millimeters, I'm like, oi, how big is that? So I had it transferred from millimeters to inches and I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do her hair. I don't know if I'm going to try and freeform crochet that or what. Or if I'm just going to make little curly Q and just attach them. I don't know. I don't know yet. So yeah. Total math geek on it for the body. Um, which I know I at what at um. Christmas time, I talked about this journal, the Maker's Log, and I have found, for a while, I was loving it. I was using it, and now I'm not. I just find that there's too much cluttery stuff in here, like this, although it could be useful, I feel like it's mainly just... I don't know. Or this one. I feel like this is just a random. I feel like they try to make a collection. Do collections like they do in um, bullet journaling. Like this one says crafting books, but how many crafting books are you going to write in each one? Like there's this one, and then there was two before this one, and then like how many crafting books do they expect you to write in here? Like that is insane. And then, like, the kneading, listening. I mean, I started in this one, like, I don't know. I liked it, and I thought I was going to use it the way it was meant to be used, and I didn't. So, my store had a little notebook like this for two bucks. So, I bought that, and I'm just putting everything in here. So, like, I'm already writing down some stuff for yarns that I'm using, hook size, number of skeins, which I don't have that number yet, um, stuff like that. And then I will actually take a piece, a couple pieces of the yarn and tape them right here. So if for whatever reason they change the colorway name or 
uh, discontinue it, I can find a similar pink or pinks somewhere else. And yeah, so that has been something else I've been working on. Um, I am trying to have it done by birthday, which is February 9th. And I made the leg in basically sitting and working on it for two nights. So after the kids went to bed, I had like two, three hours to work on it at night. Because that seems like the, lately it seems like the only time I can actually get anything done is once they're in bed. Which sometimes that doesn't even work because they wake up and then they know that mommy's downstairs. And they want to come lay with mommy. And be with mom. And dad. Because my husband's always up with me too. So, yeah. Um, in terms of cowl, the Honey Blossom shawl cowl, I have not picked it back up. I haven't even ripped it out yet. It's still sitting right here. Waiting to be ripped out. But like I said, like, everyone's telling me that I should rip it out and start again and just make it through. And a part of me really wants to because I really did love the way this shawl looked. Like, it was, looked really pretty from the pictures. And a part of me really wants to rip it out and try again and make this stinking shawl. But another part of me is I'm not one of those people that not completing a project is not going to bother me. Like, some people may be like, I'm going to finish it because if I don't, it's going to bug me kind of thing. Like... I can't leave a project like that that basically conquered me like alone and I'm not one of those people if I don't get a pattern I rip it out and I just use the yarn for something else and like I said I'm still I'm still on the fence whether or not I'm going to rip it out and redo it I mean it's gonna get ripped out because I'm not gonna waste this yarn because I love mandala yarn and it is super cute um, but I don't know if I'm going to do the shawl, unfortunately. I may use it and make up another sample of, if this sample works, of this shawl that I'm creating, I might just rip it out and just use that yarn for another sample to show that you can use any yarn weight. Because this pattern is designed to where you can use any yarn weight as long as you use two hook sizes up. So like the Karen cake is, I think it's a light worsted weight because it's not quite a DK, but it is not quite a worsted weight. It's a little lighter. So I've been using a seven millimeter hook and it recommends a five, I believe. So as long as you look at your yarn tag and whatever size hook they recommend, go two sizes up. So if it's a five, a seven. If it's a six, an eight. If it's a two millimeter, four. Kind of like that. If it's a lace weight, you're going to go three millimeter. Um, so, yeah. I want to kind of have a bunch of different samples to show that you can do this in any yarn weight. You could use... You know, as long as you go two hook sizes up to make it, like, drapey. Because if you go too tight, it's not going to be drapey enough. Um, yeah. I'm just, I'm still kind of in that morning fog of waking up still. <laughs> and my coffee's starting to get cold. Nick? Can you do me a big favor? Can you warm up my coffee? Thank you. Okay, so, yes. And for the cow, I believe we have three Sundays, three weeks left. One, three, two, three. Okay, hold on. Oh, my eyelashes are sticking together. One. Oh, we still have two and a half weeks. One. One, two, yeah, two and a half weeks left until the cal ends. Still plenty of time. Um, if you have not joined yet, I know this pattern has been plagued with issues. But 
if you think you can figure it out or you want to give it a try, definitely check out the Ravelry group and check out their thread that we have open in the chatter thread because we have figured out what was wrong. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of making sure you get it right. Um, oh my gosh, I'm totally blanking. Okay, so the yarn that I bought... I did buy, I showed you one, but I bought five balls of that. Um, so I'll show it again. This is, we're now onto yarn hoarding at this point because I don't have any other works in progress. Thank you. Just uh, 30 seconds. Um, so I'll show you again with a full ball. This is in baby pink. And it's red heart, super saver. And I... I'm super surprised that they have such a cute pattern on the ball band. I normally, but that looks. That's knitted though. Knitted pattern. My bad. Well, if you knit, there you go. It says, does it say, uh, the. No. It, 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 you <laughs> it'd probably tell you how easy it is on the inside of the ball band so I got five of those and I got two of these and this is in shocking pink um, it's showing up a little lighter not lighter a little duller in um, person Thank you. Mm, much better. Oh yeah, that's much better. Um, super saver and shocking pink. This is actually a really, really bright pink. Like, it is. It's coming out really muted on screen. Like this is bright, bright pink. Also. I got two balls of this because, excuse the um, mess of the ball because my son got it and was playing with it. This is Premier's, uh, Premier Yarns, Deborah Norville Collection Everyday Soft Worsted. And this is in a heather blend or like it's heathered. And this is oat heather. Um... That's actually coming out pretty true to color. I saw this and I was like, ooh, that's really pretty. And then I squished it. Ooh, it's soft. It's acrylic. 100% um, anti-pilling acrylic. So it is super soft. And I only bought two because that's all they had. Um, but I do plan on slowly buying enough to make a cardigan because I really want to make a cardigan really bad <laughs> because the cardigans that come in my size aren't that cute or they shrink like crazy and it never fails like any item that I have bought and that was made in yarn so sweaters or cardigans they shrink like crazy and a lot of the times they're in acrylic so I don't understand why it's shrinking so bad I don't know mm. I don't know can you guys see that steam coming off of it oh yeah okay so that was all I've bought yarn wise yeah that's it um but I bought a magazine like, oh my gosh, what was it? I mentioned it two podcasts ago and I bought it like three days before that. So like two and a half weeks ago I bought this and I just got it um, on Thursday, I believe. So I went on lovecrochet.com and I was looking at books and magazines. I can't remember if I was under the knitted books or the crochet books. I thought it was crochet. Um, but I saw this. 
online magazine. Um, and most of the writing on the front is in English. I mean, that's Ger I think this is German. It looks German. Um, under here, this tiny one is in German. Right here, German. But everything else, I mean, obviously this, all this little stuff, but you can't really see that online. Like they show you the main picture and then you see the big words and you're like, okay, English. So I bought this thinking it was a crochet magazine and it was in English. Boy, was I wrong and I was surprised um, to find out one, it's knitting. And they sent me this packet, which this is in English. Um, I don't know if this is all of the patterns in there or if it's just some. Um, but it's a pretty thick packet, and I think it might be all of them, because this is about as thick as the book itself. So, they, if it is all the patterns, I have to double check. I literally saw this, and I was like, oh, everything's in German. They sent me this, which is in English, but I haven't double. Once I saw that it was German, I was like, seriously? And it's knitting. So, these are all, like, knitted items, and, like... I saw these and I was like, ooh, those are pretty. I don't know why I thought these were crocheted. Like, well, I mean, from looking at it, you can't really tell because their pictures are so far away. But, well, now I have one for, you know. Oh, that's a pattern. Hold on. Like, there's this one that shows more of that, and there's this page. So, I mean, there's a lot of patterns in here. Sorry if I bumped the microphone. There's a lot of patterns in here, but they're all knitted. So, I mean, I have um, unknowingly started um, accumulating and, not accumulating, uh, growing, increasing my knitted knitwear collection <laughs> oh my gosh but like I said it's in German so it says design 01 so I'm guessing this has all of them in here design 17 design 28 yeah this this has to have all of them they probably realize that I'm in the US and I probably don't speak German so they printed out basically all the patterns on here in English for me. So that's part of the um, library love because I now have knitted patterns that I can do. Mm. Coffee. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So I've started this new thing. This is... It's crochet related, but it's not chatter. Um, kind of chatter. Like, I've been wanting to do garments. Like, that's, I told you in my crochet goals, if you watched it, I'll link it up below. Um, I did my crochet goals tag, and one of my number one things that I want to do is more garments. Um, like, things that I want to do was either, like, big mandala blankets or cardigans slash knit not knitwear, um, just garments in general, whether they're knit or crochet. I want to do more garments. Um, yeah. So I was sitting here and I was looking up and I've always been intimidated of doing it because of the different sizes. And I know a lot of designers tend to stay away from garments because of the sizes. You have to make it for a lot of different sizes and you have to try and get all those different variations together to make a garment. And I was like, there has to be some kind of chart. You know, there has to be some chart out there somewhere that has a commercial, widely used measurements for garments, you know, whether it's the ones they use in stores or not. But I found it. So 
I also created a crochet binder. <sighs> and that is totally blowing out the screen. <laughs> um, so I made a crochet binder. I tried to do this in purple, but it wouldn't let me make it purple. Like, it was purple on the screen, but it was not purple when I printed it out. So, crochet binder. Um, which I'm going to be putting all the patterns that I like and enjoy as well as the ones I have made. So the ones I've designed um, in here. But they have this. I went to, it's called um, the Craft Yarn Council. It's online and it says it's under yarnstandards.com. Um, but it is the standard... Standards and guidelines for crochet and knitting garments. Um, let me take this out of the binder because the binder is huge. This is super helpful. I feel like if you are someone who wants to design garments, you definitely need to go look at this. If you are new to crocheting, go look at this or knitting, go look at it. <laughs> Um, it explains and has so many useful, it has so much useful information. Um, so first off, they have the master, the master list of abbreviations. So every possible abbreviation that you see in, um, knitting or crochet, it's in here. Um, unless there's someone that made a stitch and it didn't really have an abbreviation, I would think are the only ones that don't, won't be in here. So they also have the knitting one, the knitting master list. Um, let's see. And everything for this, it will be linked below. So all you'll have to do is go in the um, description box and you will have the link directly to it. So you can click it and it'll take you directly to their website and you can print out the PDF. Um, they also have the skill level chart. I feel like this is super, super helpful for beginners. So you can kind of gauge how easy or hard something will be. Um, whether it's in knitting or crochet, they have both charts there. Um, okay, so here's what I was talking about. They have, this starts the standard sizing for men, women, and children. And this is not just garments, like shirts. It has everything from, okay, hold on, before I get into that. It actually shows you how to measure. So if you want something that's going to fit you perfectly, it shows you exactly how to measure yourself so you can make a garment that's going to fit you exactly the way you want it, not standard issue sizes. But when you're a designer, I feel like in order to get your bearings, you kind of have to make things standard size first before you can start playing a little with sizes to, you know, um, basically the shaping of a garment. So size charts, they have baby, children, and they have... Oh my gosh, my hands are like shaky right now and I don't know why. Um, youth, so kids size it. So they have baby, small children, youth sizes. So size 12, 14, 16. And then they have women's. Um, and it goes all the way up to 5X. That's amazing. Like it goes from extra small to 5X. So if you wanted to make a garment that literally is for every woman, they have this in here. So you can do that. You have all the measurements to do that. Now it may take a lot more yarn, but as bigger girls, we like nice things too. <laughs> then they have men's and then they also have um, head circumference for hats. So you can make hats to fit perfectly. They have preemie, baby, toddler, child, women and adults, or women and men. Um, then they also have foot sizes for socks, for infants and child, women and men. And then a lot of people, I think, get confused with yarn weights and the systems. Um, 
I know I get a lot of questions online about yarn weights um, for my shop. A lot of people ask me what yarn they should use and what hook goes with what um, yarn, like what weight of yarn. And this tells you everything from lace to jumbo. It tells you the type that it's called. So like um, a fine weight would be a sport or baby yarn or a three is a DK or light worsted, you know, stuff like that. It'll tell you um, knit gauge. It tells you recommended needle size for knitting, recommended US size, crochet gauges, hook sizes, everything. And then this one, because I have a real issue <laughs> I have a problem with um, like the number letter system of knitting and crochet. So like when someone says a US size two, I'm like, what the heck is that in knitting? Or an H hook, which I think that's a five millimeter. Isn't it? Yeah, is a five millimeter. But that's the only one I know because that's the one I have literally used most of my life is a, is a five millimeter. But I have a real issue remembering that because I strictly use millimeters. I don't use the letter number system. So I printed this one out because I always have issues with that. And I'm telling you, this is a great resource. There were a lot more pages in there, um, but these are the ones that I felt were the most important and most useful. Well, I can't say most useful because I didn't read most of the other stuff. I went in there strictly for the size charts because I want to start making garments and I kind of had, I feel like the designer bug has bit me because I have ideas going crazy in my mind. Like the giant pussy pie will be, it, I'm writing the pattern as I go. Um, so that one will be a pattern once it's finished. Um, but I'm only one leg in, <laughs> which means I can do two legs, but I still need to do the back legs, the body, the neck, the head. <laughs> so there's still a long way to go for that one. Um, yeah. And chatter life has just been pretty slow this week. Not much has gone on, you know, husband's back to work. So crocheting has slowed down a lot. Um, he, I mean, he's been back to work for a while now, but after having him home for like, what was it like three, four weeks? It was crazy. Like he took off two and a half weeks from a little before Christmas to a little after New Year. And then we had the snowstorm that hit. So he was off for like, he literally went back to work for one day and he got off like another five days because of the snow, five or six days. And then he went back to work. So basically he was off for like three and a half weeks. So that was hard because I got used to having him home for three and a half weeks and then being able to crochet a lot and then now he's back at work and I can't because I have to take care of the kitties all the time now because I didn't have help or I had help before and now I don't. So that's been an adjustment. Like I said, um, crocheting has slowed down a little bit. I'm not getting projects done as fast as I was before and during Christmas time, before Christmas, I was doing projects that were like mainly hats or things that were going to kind of crank out fast that weren't going to take much time. So, and now that I'm getting into projects that are taking a little time, the finished objects will be a little bit slower. <laughs> um, but like I said, I've been bit by the designer bug and I don't know. It's like, how many patterns do you have to do? before you're considered a designer, you know, like 10, five, I don't know. I mean, at this point, I mean, graph gans, I don't count because I didn't design them. I put them in a program and I color correct and double check to make sure that the pattern is the correct tones, colors. Um, and some of these softwares that you use on line, they can really screw up a picture, like really screw up a picture. So, you know, making sure that the picture is accurate 
Um, so I didn't design it. I just go in there and do the work that most people don't want to take the time to do because it can take a long time to color correct a color correct and fix a pattern like hours. <laughs> but I've only designed three actual pattern patterns. So it's like, when do you be considered a designer? That's my question to you. When do you consider a person a designer? How many patterns do they have to be to be considered a designer? That's my question. Because I've never really considered myself a designer. It was just, oh, I made this. I like the pattern. I'll write it up and put it online if someone likes it and they can buy it. But, yeah. One? Is it two? Three? Ten? I don't know. There are some people that are crazy that have, like, not crazy in a bad way. Crazy, like, holy, how do they do that? Like, how did they come up with that many designs? Where they have, like, hundreds on their Ravelry page. And I'm like, how? Like, how do you get the, ins like, I'm one of those people that I need the inspiration or this brilliant idea to do stuff. Like, I can't just sit down and just write up a pattern, like, scratch it on a paper and figure, like, there has to be some kind of inspiration. I need my muse to slap me in the face with, <laughs> with a design pattern, you know, and how some of these people can crank out patterns after pattern after pattern after pattern is just crazy to me in a good way. Like, go you that you can do that. I mean, it's amazing. Um, but I'm just like, I'm not one of those people. I am like Michelangelo. I need the muse to speak to me. I am nowhere near compared to Michelangelo. <laughs> but, um, yeah. But other than that, dude, this week has been slow. Oh my gosh, I said this was going to be a short podcast and it's already at 42 minutes. What the heck? What can I say? I like to keep you guys here. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think I'm going to let you go because that's pretty much all I have this week um, to tell you. And I will see you all next week. Bye.